Hey everybody, welcome to our five minute Bible study series. We are gonna talk about 1 Samuel chapter seven in today's video. There is a PDF which you're gonna see on the screen. You can download it on our website for free. When did the events of 1 Samuel chapter seven take place? Well, it happened during the lifetime of Samuel. We know that he was probably born in about 1100 BC. I've narrowed that date down a little bit based on some more information that I've read. I had kind of a range of dates in the last couple chapters. I think it was closer to 1100 BC. He probably died around 1012 BC. So we know that these, hap these, these events took place during his lifetime. This would have been before 1050 BC, which is the date I'm going to use for when Israel anointed a king. And just so you know, dating the events in the Bible gets a lot easier after like King David, King Solomon. So <laughs> there's a lot of approximate dates and debate about the dates previous to this, but hopefully it'll get a little easier moving forward. In regards to our characters, we have the Israelites, of course, but I don't have them listed here because we pretty much talk about them every chapter. We have Samuel. He's a judge in Israel. He was the judge in Israel until the Israelites appointed a king, well, even into that period a little bit. The Philistines are our next character. We've been talking about them in the last couple of chapters. They were the longtime enemies of the Israelites. In regards to our map, we're going to talk about the Philistines attacking the Israelites at Mizpah. We're told that Samuel lived in Ramah, but he also judged the Israelites in different locations. He made a circuit between the cities of Bethel, Gilgal, and Mizpah. The first section of this chapter, I kind of feel like should be attached to the last chapter. It's just the first two verses. It kind of finishes up the story of the Ark of the Covenant being taken by the Philistines and then given back to the Israelites. The Ark is brought to Kiriath Jerim is the title of this section. The men of Kiriath Jerim went to Beth Shemesh and they took the Ark of the Covenant at their request. You remember they wanted it out of their town, so they called for these men and the men of Kiriath Jerim came and took it. They brought the Ark to the house of a man a man named Abinadab, and they consecrated his son Eliezer to care for it. And we're told that it remained there at his house for at least 20 years. Then we move on to verses 3 through 6. Israel turns back to the Lord. So the Israelites had been oppressed by the Philistines, and they were tired of it. So they finally, finally decided to do the right thing, to repent of their sins and to turn back to God. Samuel told them that what they needed to do was to put away their idols and worship only the true God, the true God who had always taken care of them throughout these years. So the people did that, and the people gathered at Mizpah, and Samuel prayed for them there. Our last section is verses 7 through 17, the Philistines attack at Mizpah. So when the Philistines learned that the Israelites were gathering at Mizpah, they sent an army to attack them. Samuel offered a sacrifice of a lamb to God, and he asked God to help them with this battle. The Lord answered by thundering with, quote, a mighty sound, and he caused the Philistine army to fall into a state of confusion. Recognizing that God was helping them, the Israelites fought against the Philistines and defeated them. And we're told that Samuel erected a stone and he called it Ebenezer, saying, quote, Till now the Lord has helped us. So Ebenezer, this is a this scripture explains a very popular song that gets sung a lot in churches. That is a fount of every blessing, or O thou fount of every blessing. There's that line in that song that goes. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come. And you probably sang that before. Like, what on earth is an Ebenezer? And basically what that song is saying is, Here I raise my Ebenezer, my stone of memorial, that by God's help I've come all this way. Right. So that's, uh, that's where it comes from. And finally, we're told that God didn't allow the Philistines to oppress the Israelites or to have victory over the Israelites during the, the lifetime of Samuel. Samuel judged Israel for the rest of his life, and we're told that he went on a circuit, which I mentioned, from Bethel to Gilgal to Mizpah, and he judged the people in each one of those locations. Now, finally, let's finish up with an application. A life in the service of the Lord can be lived well in just a very small area of the world. We read about people like Paul in the New Testament who traversed multiple countries, right, taking the gospel all over the place, planting churches, and that's one way to serve God. But it's not the only way to be faithful to God. Samuel spent his entire life judging Israel in cities that really weren't more than like 50 miles apart if you look at them on the map. Community work and international work, if you want to call it that, are different in nature, but they are equal in value. 